Jingbu legends come from the Chinese mythology of a three-legged crow believing to inhabit and represent the sun. With Jing meaning go and Wu means crow, the legend of the golden crow according to the ancient legend described the crow rises from the east on the branches of the sun tree and flying across the sky, bringing light and warmth to the world. As the day comes to an end, Jing Wu would return to the sun tree, bringing along the sunset with her. Or him, I'm not really sure if he's a he or her. Jing Wu represent as the sun to the people of China is a way of bringing the meaning of hope, courage, and strength. You could kind of say that with Jing Wu rising from the morning till the sunset, it's a way of saying that every day is another chance to get better. Other folklore from China describe that Jing Wu does not represent the sun to be exact, but rather the crow carries the sun on its back, traveling from east to west. Jing Wu is confirmed on Global to be able to claim one copy of her during her event. You can also from her shards from Dimension Wearables, and last but not least, from Ling Guang spending event, you'll get a little bit more shards if you try to pull for Ling Guang. My memory is very bad, so according to players on Discord and Reddit, people state that you'll be able to almost able to triple as Jing Wu if you follow all the steps. So according to my video, I apologize for being wrong. Jing Wu can also be scanned using the yellow ticket, so I hope you have been saving because if you've been following my channel, I have been saying that ever since the beginning. The only character that dethroned her is Izanami who is a Shino and Ice element but regardless if she is weaker or stronger than Izanami, she is definitely worth saving and is best on her own term. Jingbu is a melee character using her access key known as the Ten Blaze. Folklore has it that there are a total of 10 Golden Crow taking turns every each time like I said, and 10 blades representing that lore can be dispersed into 10 pieces, all carrying the power of the sun. From the Tianyun faction, Divine Grace mechanism, and Fire Element, now we'll talk about Jing Wu's kit. Jing Wu has two fighting styles. Normal state, where you start at the beginning of the game where she's standing firmly on the ground, and the Sun Fate state, can be triggered by tapping skill 3. Jing Wu has a special mark on top of her HP called the Blaze Mark, or the Blazing Mark by Global Term. Jing Wu has a 5 basic attack dealing a total of 762% damage, succession Succession in 5 basic attack will result in 5 blazing mark. Up to 9 can be gained. Skill 1 is known as Demon Slayer. Jingbu will perform 3 slash towards enemy dealing a total damage of 1123%. If you have a blaze mark, it will be consumed and buff you with a buff known as the Fire Feather. You can actually see an upward red arrow surrounding Jingbu, indicating that the buff is on effect. Now, Firefighter will last for 8 seconds, up to 12 times can be stacked. One Firefighter increases your skill damage by 2%, with a maximum of 24% if I'm not mistaken by my math. Not only that, if you cast skill 1 with a full blaze mark, it will deal an additional damage of 561%, totaling up to 1684%. That's really a big difference. Another reason to fill up 9 blaze mark is that after casting it, you will gain 25 Divine Grace, which is going to be very useful along her other kit. Skill 2, Evil Crusher. Jing Wu will release an AoE flame attack doing a total of 561%. Each time it hits an enemy, you will gain 1 Blaze Mark. While the skill is on cooldown, it will be replaced by another skill, which I will be calling skill 2B or maybe version 2. You can just tap the skill again and honestly, it deals the same amount of damage as the original skill 2 and it really just gives you blaze mark just like skill 2 but it will be different when you have her Fangtor which I don't really want to explain because I don't feel like you need to understand so much of her, this part of her kit to utilize it. Skill 2 is not the priority but if you're looking for damage while skill 1 is on cooldown, yeah, you should use skill 2. Next we have skill 3, Sun Chaser. Jing Wu will use up all her Divine Grace to deal some damage and then enter Sun Fate state, or rather known as the Floating state. While floating, Jing Wu has Unyielding Effect, or known as Hyper Armor or Hyper Body, depending on what kind of games you play in the past. Jing Wu still receives damage, but she cannot be knocked down or stunned. Jing Wu also increases her fire damage overall depending on how much Divine Grace is consumed entering this state. The percentage wasn't state, so I say max it out for the best. You'll exit Sun Fate mode the moment you do not attack for 2.5 seconds, Jing Wu will drop and then you'll go back to the ground mode. You can maintain it by keep tapping attack, or maybe dashing in between, 
or casting skill. In this mode, it wasn't stated how much damage Jingbo does with her normal attack or rather it does, but I will tell you that she has better hit rate, a lot faster compared to her basic attack, and judging by the number I've seen, she does about 20-30% more damage. Every slash of her basic attack will grant you one place mark. Now skill 1 and skill 2 and skill 3 will be changed. Skill 1 is now called Crow Scorch. You'll need at least 3 blaze marks to cast this, but I recommend to use 9. So basically attack the enemy until you have 9 blaze marks so that the moment you cast Q1, you will gain 80 divine graces. Otherwise, casting with 3 blaze marks only will give you 20 divine grace only. This skill deals a total damage of 1684% fire damage. Skill 2 is now called Crossfire. It consumes all divine grace to do AoE damage and cast a debuff called Shackle for only 2 seconds, which I don't know what it does. This will also reduce enemy physical wind and fire resistance, making it easier to pair with characters like Osiris or Athena, but you want to really focus on fire, because number 1, it only lasts for 6 seconds. Number 2, it debuffs fire more. For every divine grace consumed, it will reduce the enemy resist resistance by 0.1%. So if you have 100 divine grace, that'll be 10%. It's actually very easy to build on the floating mode. On top of that, it also has a fixed debuff on fire resistance, not only from the divine grace, but a fixed version of it by 20%, but for physical and wind, only 10%. So it's still better to pair Jingbu with a fire team. This skill, I forgot to mention, deals a total of 600% plus damage. Not a lot, but it really is there to do a fire resistance debuff. Now skill 3 is now called a Sun Crusher, and it has the ability to exit Sun Fate State, and leaves a devastating backflip thrust down, dealing a total most damage in your kit of 2246%. But if you have more Blaze Mark, one Blaze Mark would increase the damage by 3%, 9 making it 27%. Her ultimate is called 10 Blaze Incan Descent. I don't really know how to pronounce it. So you cannot cast Jingbu's ultimate if you're in the Sun Fate state or the floating state. You have to be standing firmly on the ground. She will release the power of the sun in 10 Blaze, causing a total of 1871% fire damage. Only see the reason to use it if you pair with Ling Guang or if you want to generate some uh, Divine Grace. Because for every each blazing mark that you have, if you can build up to 9, you'll gain around almost 95% Divine Grace. That's actually a lot if you try to build up Grace and then before entering into the Sun Fate state again. Remember that you need Divine Grace in order to boost the Sun Fate state. Ah, oh, this is complicated. Apologies for downing the quality of the videos. I'm lacking of time to make videos. I'm gonna be away for a while. So I'm, I'm actually in a rush. So. I forgot to mention that uh, Jing Wu dash attack also has an effect, basically just small amount of damage. So what I want to showcase here is the rotation of playing Jing Wu. So at the start of the game, you go in, the first thing you want to do is actually trigger skill 2 and then follow by basic attack, right? And then do a cancel animation and then you do a skill 1 to gain divine grace right you want to gain as much divine grace the more divine grace you have the more uh, when you enter the other mode you'll have a better damage right so just do the same thing and then basic attack again and there we go then keep doing it right and again do two and do it right i'm not gonna try to max it so you enter this mode the first thing you want to do is keep doing basic attack until you gain the mark to maximum because the more it is, the divine grace is gonna gain, and then you're gonna do it by three again, and then do it release. Right? You can debuff it, and what I do is keep doing that until you have maximum uh, ultimates and maximum blaze mark, and then you're just gonna do this charge, and then you're gonna try to max the mark again in this mode, right? Because if the more the mark is, the moment you cast ultimate, your divine grace is going to be max. And then you do this again, <laughs> right? So when we're talking about Eater Codes, the red one is the only one that's recommended. The rest are not worth it, in my opinion. It's basically, it helps with the Divine Grace, helps with Fire Resistance Debuff, and so forth. I can't remember what I read. 
I did like scripted everything. I did record everything, but I don't have the time to edit it. I'll be away for a few days. And as for her Fountor, what her Fountor does is that the stats are not even that like major changes, crit rate a little bit and stuff like that. It helps with the Blazing Mark gain rate as well as the Divine Grace gain rate. Right? And if you have the Fountor, this is the Sajil that I would recommend you to use. If you have the Fountor, use this one. If you don't have the Fountor, use the one on top. That is going to help you with Divine Grace build. Uh, this one is going to help you with uh, a bit more damage right there. I'm pretty sure with a lot of people coming back into 2.0, you're going to be confused on what stats to roll. Uh, basically roll three of these stats until they're max. The others are fine as a bonus. And last but not least, these are the warp codes that I actually recommend. Aside that, I don't think I miss anything else. For team build wise, like I said in my Lingguang video, these two are two, one pair. And maybe in the future you can slap Flame Deer, but you can also slap Gang Chang for just support and pulling in. But of course you want to put like a uh, Flame character because Lingguang and um, Jingu does fire resistance debuff. So Asura is a great choice. Kagetsuchi is also a good choice. Uh, you can also slap like characters like uh, Auser or even like physical like Buzen Bolt due to the win and physical debuff from Jingwu, but that's not gonna help with Jing uh, Ling Guang, right? So again, it's always about fire in this team. So we're just gonna jump in the game, showcase it, and that's basically it. So again, like I said, I'm sorry for downgrading the video. I really scripted everything. I really edited everything, but I'm like, I got, I gotta go, right? I gotta go. So she, this does change her hair into like a water vapory effect, un, 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 unlike the normal glow, and her entire skill as well. Look at that, so pretty. I'm gonna do this thruster, right? Hopefully, we'll be able to build the ultimates. I think the only problem I have is that Aether Gazer just dropped two of the character, even though my flame tear video is already done. Now I have to be like, when flame tear comes out, I have to I have to describe it a little differently now. Uh, uh, I should have waited. I should have waited. But regardless, what happened has already happened, right? Oh, look at that. Oh, bye. And everything changes too. It's pretty cool, actually. I think they also have like the victory pose changes. And there you go. It does have it. I, I really regret not getting this skin. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'm sorry for the downgrade in quality. I'll try to do better. And sorry for the misinformation about the free Tianyang Factor. Thank you all so much for watching, Zaki here and A is just a gaming channel.